Okay, Unit 19, Pulse and Respiration. So these are two of your 22 skills listed in your uh, skills booklet. So again, you will have a measurement skill. Everybody will have a measurement skill. So you could potentially have uh, one of these on your skills test. So pulse, so it's the pressure of blood felt against the wall of an artery. So as the heart alternately contracts and relaxes. So again, it's that pressure of blood. So obviously it's going to be um, easier felt in arteries fairly close to the skin. So in your book there is a great schematic of all the locations where you can find a pulse within the body. Um, but the ones we use really frequently are are used because of their close proximity to the to the skin and so they're easier felt, easier to find. So it's same in all arteries throughout the body. So it's an indication of how the cardiovascular system is meeting the body's needs. So again, we'll talk about the cardiovascular system in more detail, but again, the purpose is to take um, nutrients to body, to, to cells, to tissues where it, it's needed, and oxygen, and then to take away waste products. So um, how well is, is the cardiovascular system meeting this need? It's kind of a, a good brief indicator of how well that system's functioning. So the radial pulse, and radial pulse is what we will be using um, to find the pulse for your pulse skill on test day. So it's the most commonly measured pulse, and you've probably measured your own pulse, um, potentially radially, or you've had it done in a, a healthcare provider's office. So it's measured at the radial artery in the wrist, and the, the picture on the, um, the right-hand side of your screen here, so it's showing kind of where that's located, on the thumb side of the person's wrist, and we'll, we'll go into um, detail and practice this in class. So using a stethoscope, so um, we're going to be using a stethoscope for our um, blood pressure skill that we'll go to into this week. So it's really important that, um, again, it's another device and there are some user errors that can result in using a stethoscope. So just being mindful of those. If you're going to take somebody's blood pressure and or listen to apical pulse or whatever it is and you aren't able to um, hear anything through there, it could be that your earpieces are not the right direction. It could be that you have um, it positioned on bell and you're trying to listen on the diaphragm side and so we'll really talk about these errors in class as well but it's important um, and part of your skills test is um, for blood pressure your blood pressure skill is to clean the earpieces and diaphragm before using so again good infection control um, we've, we talk about in the infection control unit you know contaminating from patient to patient and so that is one source of contamination so you're going to clean the stethoscope tubing if it contacts the patient or bed linen. So again, depending on what happens while you're doing the skill, if it does come in contact with linen, remember, always considered dirty, or the patient, we're going to make sure that we decontaminate it, we clean the, the stethoscope before using it on another patient. So also check your pieces for wax. So <laughs> that sounds a little bit gross, I'm sure, for the first time users, but it is really important that there's nothing um, occluding that you know the ability for you to, for you to hear. So if there's something blocking in there, obviously you're not going to be able to be able to hear what you're listening for. So make sure that you remove that wax and that you're making sure that the earpieces are cleaned. So check the stethoscope tubing. So when you have um, your own stethoscope, your own blood pressure cuff, make sure that you're not storing it in harsh environments. And that, so you're not going to leave it in your car overnight. You're not leaving it in the hot sun. Um, so again, the tubing can break down just like any other type of tubing. And what happens is it can get cracks or holes. And that's going to limit your ability to hear through the stethoscope. So make sure that you're really conscious about where you store these and you try to store them in appropriate places. And then positioning the earpiece forward so it's really really important we'll talk about that so making sure that the ear the stethoscope ear pieces are like a beak so that they face forward so again it's the opening is not facing um, the back of your ear where you're not going to be able to hear through it so it's facing your ear canal and so you're able to hear what you're what you're trying to hear through the stethoscope so the diaphragm of the stethoscope should not contact the patient's clothing, the blood pressure cuff, or other device. And so we'll talk about this in practice too. So a lot of this is making sure that you're using the right size blood pressure cuff for the patient. So if you have too large of a blood pressure cuff, a lot of times it'll take up the entire patient's arm. And so you're not, you know, top of there. They're not able to, to fit the stethoscope um, on the brachial artery where you're going to be listening for. And so it'll actually be touching the, um, the blood pressure cuff. So you don't want it to touch anything else, so again, contamination. Um, it also gives you a lot of background noise, too. So you also want to place the diaphragm flat against the skin and hold in place. And this is going to 
seem a little bit more difficult at first, but as you practice the skill, it's going to make a lot more sense. So um, it's really important. The, another big issue with students is the diaphragm's not sitting flat on the surface of the skin. So if, if that's the case, they're not going to be able to hear adequately. You're going to be hearing other outside background noises and not what you're listening for. So again, we'll practice this um, in class. So using a stethoscope, so apply firm but gentle pressure when holding the diaphragm in place. So you want to make sure that it's flat against the skin, that you're not moving around causing background noises, um, and then if pressing too hard you may not hear a sound. So you just want to make sure that you're putting it flat against the skin but in, with a, you know, a firm touch but that you're not pushing too hard. So the apical pulse is measured by counting heart contractions. So a lot of times you'll have um, a comparison of the apical and radial heart, so they should usually be the same. So this may be another type of pulse that you're asked to take, and so we'll talk about this in skills lab as well. So respiration, so respiration is the other, one of the other measurement skills you may have um, potentially on, on test day. Plus it's going to be um, a really common CNA task when you get into the workforce. So again, we'll talk about um, the, the whole respiratory system later in a different unit, but the main function is really to supply cells in the body with oxygen, so giving that good oxygen to the cells, to the tissues where it's needed, and then rid the body of excess carbon dioxide. So respiration, since breathing may be voluntarily controlled, so if I tell you to stop breathing, you can do so. If I tell you to breathe faster, you can do so. So it's something that can be involuntary and voluntary. So this, the patient should not be aware of counting. So the exception to this is going to be your Pearson View test day. You will have to make sure, again, as we go in and we, we wipe in and we slow out, part of wipe is explaining procedure, that E there. So you are going to have to, for test day, say to the patient that you're going to be counting their respirations. In a real life situation in your work environment, you will never tell a patient you're taking their respirations because they're not going to be accurate. So as soon as someone knows you're watching them breathe, they're not going to be breathing normally anymore. So um, just make sure that, you know, you know for test day we do it this way because we're following a procedure. But in real life, a lot of what you'll do is different techniques where you may just be observing breathing and not letting the patient know you're doing so. Or if they know you're taking their vital signs, you'll keep your hand, um, your fingers on their on their wrist and pretend you're still taking their radial pulse and then stop taking their radial pulse and start taking their respirations. And so we'll talk about this in class, how you go about doing that. So what's important again is not just quantity, so not just the number. Same thing with pulse, is you also want to know the quality of the of, um, the, the pulse or the respiration. So um, a lot of things, so they may still have a normal respiratory rate, so that 12 to 20, but what happens is it's important to note the quality of it. So are they breathing normal or are they having labored breathing? So um, they may still have, uh, you know, a, nor a within normal range respiration, but if it's a labored breathing, that's important um, qualifying information that you need to pass along to the nurse. So shallow or deep, so it's important. So again, um, irregularities in breathing can be indicative of other things. So a lot of times even um, just just if someone's having a, 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 or is about to have an asthma attack or if someone's, um, you know, slowly dying and th their breathing's going to change. So making sure that you're passing along not just the rate but the quality of the breathing as well. So quiet or noisy, so if you can hear um, Aud you know, audible wheezes when someone's breathing. So making sure that you're passing along not just the, qual the quantity but also the quality of how a patient's breathing. So you're also going to look for um, accessory muscles used during breathing. So if someone is having respiratory distress or if someone's having difficulty breathing, they're going to be using some accessory muscles. And those are the muscles of the neck and the abdomen. So they, sh they wouldn't be muscles that they're normally using for breathing. They're using them because they're having some respiratory difficulty. So if the patient is using these muscles for breathing, make sure you inform the nurse because again, it's not just the quantity, it's the quality. So if they're using, their respiratory rate may be completely normal, but they're using these accessory muscles. So it's, it's showing that they are having some difficulty breathing. So again, you know, we use vital signs as kind of a quick measurement to see the health status of somebody. If there's anything concerning anything abnormal, that's always your role as the CNA to report those observations to the nurse because remember, it's the RN's task to do the nursing assessment. So then they need to come in and assess that patient and find out exactly what's going on.